Hello folks, my name is Kevin Douglas Berg. This is What Was I Say in Blog KDB. I'm here to provoke thought and move humanity just a little bit. Before I start on what's going on with Israel, I want to just bring up the point that in the past, the other administration, America first, America first, America first, you know, um, under Trump, People were like, that's very, um, very one-sided, very egotistic, very nationalist, whatever you want to fucking call it. Believe it or not, folks, you have to have a strong United States of America to have a stable world stage. Like it or not, we are many countries' watchdogs. America first, America first. It might have seemed like it was egotistic. It might have seemed cocky. It might have seemed like it was all just for us. But what happens, but what happens when you don't have a strong America profile, when you don't have a strong ideals, when you don't have a strong presence, presentation for the rest of the world you are seen as weak when you're seen as weak those that wish us to do us harm are on the offensive with that Middle East Biden's debate Oh, man. Sorry. Biden's debate performance raises alarms. Alarm in Israel. Read it to you. Israel feel, Israelis feel now of what that shit show was. Iran and its proxies might try to exploit Biden's apparent weakness. Israel's expressed growing concern on, let me just turn this down so I'm not so loud <laughs> on you guys. Israel's uh, expressed concern on Sunday that President Biden's shaky debate performance could spur on the country's Middle Eastern foes at what many view as a critical time for American leadership in the region. Israeli commentators across the political spectrum warned with that Iran its proxies could try to exploit Mr. Biden's apparent weakness as Israel fights Hamas in Gaza and weighs the prospect of an all-out conflict with Hezbollah militia in Lebanon. U.S. officials have been working to broker a diplomatic solution in the tensions between Israel and Hezbollah in an attempt to avert a wider regional war that they fear could draw in both Iran and the United States. The Biden administration is also involved in tense efforts with other mediators to try to advance a truce deal for Gaza that would involve exchanging the remaining hostages there for Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails. And Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel has publicly pressured the Biden administration to speed up munitions supplies ahead of any conflagration with Hezbollah in Lebanon. Several of Israel's Sunday's newspapers featured the debate on the front pages in a kind of delayed reaction. The debate took place, excuse me, dawn on Friday local time after the weekend papers had gone to press. And Hebrew dailies are not published on Saturday the Sabbath. Analysis for Israel Hayom, Hayom a right-wing free paper, and the left-leaning Haaretz paper differently shar differed sharply in tone, but both raise the specter of enemies of Israel and the United States testing the administration's resolve. Will Hezbollah in Iran assess that Biden is too busy now to back Israel in case an all-out war breaks out in Lebanon this summer. Amos Herald 
Haaretz military affairs analyst wrote on Sunday. While some in Israeli right have mocked Mr. Bating's debate performance, hoping for a Trump victory, Mr. Harrell continued that was a display of ungratefulness after the U.S. president stood by Israel and supplied it with large quantities of weapons. Moreover, he added, Trump is a feeble reed to rely on. Oh, sorry. People read uh, Oh, wait, sorry. During the presidential debate on Thursday, Mr. Trump accused Mr. Biden of not wanting Israel to finish the job in Gaza, calling him weak and raising the eyebrows by using the word Palestinian as an insult. Mr. Biden offered little in the way of response. And that was the whole fucking debate thing. Nuclear football, folks. He's got the codes. <laughs> Who's running the show? You've got me. Um, Mr. Biden has been a staunch supporter of Israel throughout the war, although he has been critical, frequently calling on Israel to limit civilian casualties and to work to mitigate the humanitarian crisis in the Palestinian enclave. He has a long history with Netanyahu. Mr. Biden flew to Israel in a powerful show of solidarity last fall, soon after the Hamas-led terrorist assault on southern Israel that prompted the war in Gaza. He has since paid a political price for his support, which has infuriated American opponents of the war who want the U.S. government to stop providing Israel with munitions. But the vision of Mr. visions of Mr. Biden and Mr. Uh, Yahoo, Netanyahu had diverged in recent months. The U.S. government held up one shipment to Israel of heavy bombs, fearing that they would be used in densely populated areas. And Mr. Biden has dismissed Mr. Netanyahu's off-stated goal of total victory over Hamas as a vague, vague objective that would meet an indefinite war. Yeah, Netanyahu says we got to destroy Hamas. Anybody else would in that position? You criticize them all you want, man. It is what it is. Mr. Trump, a strongly supportive of Israel as a president, largely went along with the agenda of Mr. Netanyahu and his right-wing allies. During his term, Mr. Trump moved the United States Embassy from Tel Aviv to journalism, J Jerusalem, fulfilling a long-standing Israeli demand. But the former president appears to have soured on Mr. Netanyahu. He has said the Hamas-led assault was a result of Mr. Netanyahu's lack of preparation and praised Hezbollah as very smart. In an interview in Israel in March, Mr. Trump advised Israel to wrap up the war in Gaza because losing much of the world's support. You've got to get it done, he told the paper, and we've got to get peace. We can't have this going on. Israel Hayam's publisher is Dr. Miriam Adelson, the widow of Sheldon Adelson, and a staunchy pro-Israel mega-donor who is now backing Trump's third White House bid. I think he owns the Bellagio. Um, Amon Lord, a, com a communist, a com a com sorry, a Amon Lord, a columnist for Israel, asserted on Sunday that Mr. Biden's performance in the, the debate provoked persistent claims that an extreme progressive group of aides was driving U.S. foreign policy. In a world rife with aggressive forces, he wrote, the unflattering image of an American president, the leader of the free world, appearing weak and incoherent, encourages them to exploit opportunities. Those are the facts. You know, America first. I, you got it. A lot of people didn't want that. Nationalism and, and, and us and all this and cocky. But we project an image. We project a stability for the world. When we falter, as was seen yesterday, or Thursday, actually, I should say, the whole world takes pause. Our enemies, the enemies of our allies, the terrorist-backed organizations of those terrorist states, see a potential to get one over on us or their allies or both. <sighs> Biden's decline mirrors the collapse of his Middle East policy vis-a-vis -vis Iran and its proxy, Mr. Lord added. Mr. Lord trod carefully around Mr. Trump's performance in the debate, saying that 
that only that he too did not gain supporters. Yidia R. Renat, a mainstream Hebrew daily, flagged a column on its front page describing Mr. Biden's performance as a catastrophe. The columnist, Nadam Bael, wrote that faced with the prospect of another Trump presidency, the Democrats and their allies carried the fate of the free world on their shoulders. Weakness is not a characteristic that an American president can broadcast by any stretch he wrote. That is what happens when we don't project strength, when we don't project sound mind, when we don't project we are the leader of the free world. We're the leader of the free world and we have things under control to the best of our ability. That's what happens. Now all our allies, Israel included, what the fuck's up? As I said, who's who's running that? Who, who's running their foreign affairs? Who's running who who's running the country? I'll just put it out there that way. Who's running the country? Laughing stock? Kamala Harris? Hillary? Obama? Soros? Pelosi? Who's running the country, folks? When you fumble like we have fumbled, like just this past week, and you have so many hot issues in the world as it is, even if we projected very strong and we did very good and he was coherent and he could repeat stuff and, and you know, and wouldn't have the mental decline that he does, people would still look for a weakness. But this gives them the, like that. Almost a carte blanche saying, we can't handle our shit. Not only that, we can't handle anybody else's shit right now either. I know people didn't like Trump. I know people didn't like his egotistic ways. I know he didn't like his chauvinistic statements. I know many people did not like that America first. But... What you project is what is our reputation. If you project any weakness, it is a weakness that can be taken, that taken advantage of. And if we don't think right now Iran and Hezbollah and Hamas and all those other whatever crazy fanatical fucks are not posturing right now, are not readying right now, are not discussing and planning and scheming after what they saw on Thursday, we'd have to be out of our ever-living fucking mind. Excuse my language. Not to mention China and Taiwan, not to mention the North Koreans uh, going to be over with Russia. Not to mention Russia giving them nukes. Not to mention our standing on the world stage as a free, as the leader of the, of, the, of the free world. That gentleman, he has the codes for the nuclear football. And we have a launch on command system. Six minutes. Yes or no, Mr. Uh, President Biden. Yes or no. Yes or no. We're lobbing shit at Russia right now. Our shit. We're lobbing at Russia. 
every fucking day now. Who's at home? Goosebumps. I don't know, folks. I mean, nothing I really brought you today except the bees was really pleasant at all. Unfortunately. But no one else is going to spit it like this. No one. Go all over the fucking internet. No one. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because they're afraid. People are afraid to discuss what's going on when it's going on. Not only the anti-Semitism, not only the, 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 the massive um, manipulation of data. When you look up something, we bombed Russia, we bombed Russia. No, Ukraine bombed, uh, Russia bombed Ukraine, Russia bombed. Not only that, you cannot make a thumbnail that says NATO is surrounding Putin because it violates their content. It violates what they do. It is a misuse or abuse of AI. And I would have to interject and tell them exactly why it's not. And they're going to judge the fuck me? Seriously. Did you see what happened with Amazon? Yeah. Yeah. 100,000 people gone. They have robots now. He just scoped two trillion. He's a trillion dollar, it's a trillion dollar company now. I think it was the second one besides Apple or whatever. Don't worry. AI won't take your job. Their AI run robots? Absolutely. They won't take your jobs right away. Yeah, they will. They will and they are. My name is Kevin Douglas Berg. This is what was I saying, Blog KDB. That was our update on Israel and Hamas, Netanyahu, Gaza, Joe Biden, foreign policy, who the fuck? I don't know anymore. I don't know anymore. Our allies are worried. If the allies are worried, our enemies are salivating. What? the fuck? My name is Kevin Douglasberg. If you don't see me tomorrow, you know why. <laughs> I spit the truth. I don't think they're going to torture me that bad. Anyhow, okay, my name is Kevin Douglasberg. Let's wrap this up. Pray for you. Pray for me. Pray for world peace. Please ratchet this down. Pray for those traveling. Pray for those on the plane, train, automobile. Pray for those that served, are serving, post-serving, fighting with PTSD. Pray for those that are in a hospital one a better day. Pray for all uniformed people, all policemen, police women, all um, firefighters, uh, firemen, firewomen, as well as rescue first responders, everybody in the medical field, anybody that um, has, anybody that is go going through physical, mental, uh, emotional, Psychological stress. Hopefully tomorrow is a better day. They have less suffering. All those who do not have the necessities like running water, electricity, food, shelter, clothing, a place to lay at night, a facility to clean up. Hopefully tomorrow the world is more compassionate than it is today. My name is Kevin Douglasberg. I will always spit the truth. I'm here to provoke thought and move from me just a little bit. Kevin out. Thank you. You're blessed.